this is the second section um, in the series chapter, chapter two, the core two Berber maths book, and this is on higher derivatives. Now, uh, you've already done differentiation, where if you differentiate once, and we know we uh, represent that by doing dy dx, so if you've got some sort of uh, y equals some sort of function of x, um, then if you differentiate a first time, we will call that dy dx, um, or you may write that as f dash of x. So that's your first derivative. Um, and we would use that to find the gradient of a function. Uh, if we differentiate a second time, we write it like this. Okay, which we can do as f dash dash or f double prime of x, that's your second derivative. And along uh, with, well, the second derivative you can use to help you work out whether you've got a maximum or, or minimum, you've got turning points. And then occasionally we've uh, differentiated a third time. And this is normally where uh, we want to try it try and find where we've got a point of inflection so again the alternative um, way of writing it here now there's no reason we would want to stop there there are many applications of um, differentiating uh, many times um, and then you could sort of talk about the nth derivative you know, what if we needed to differentiate n times, seven, eight times? Well, you can see the pattern that it's going to be d, and then the, the number of times you've differentiated will go there, d, n, y, d, x to the n. Okay, and then the number of little dashes you're going to have is going to be, going to have like n dashes to represent that. So this section which leads on to um, some special series is all about, okay, are there any patterns when we differentiate uh, many times? So this one here, uh, basically what we need to do is to take this, differentiate it three times till we get that, and then substitute in half and see what we get and write down what the value of that is so let's start we've got y equals log 1 minus x so if we differentiate that dy dx we can use the chain rule and we can use the chain rule with log that basically says if you've got log of a function um, then when you differentiate that, you get basically the function differentiated over itself, which means that dy dx is going to be 1 minus x differentiated, which is negative 1 over 1 minus x. So that's the first differentiation, first derivative. Now, if we differentiate a second time, we're going to have to write um, this in a form that's a bit nicer to differentiate. So if we write it as negative one, one minus x to the negative one, like this, and then we can use the chain rule to differentiate this, which basically means you differentiate the outside. So you deal with the power negative one and negative one at the front, and then you uh, multiply by inside differentiated. That's the chain rule. So if I differentiate the outside, then it becomes, um, so negative one times negative one is one, and then the power becomes negative two, and then you multiply by the inside differentiated, which is negative one, and that leaves you with negative 1 minus x to the negative 2 
and then we could differentiate our third time. So again, we use the chain rule. So if we differentiate the outside, so we'll get two, then we'll get negative three here, one minus x times by the inside differentiated. So we've got to times by negative one. So we end up with negative two, one minus x to the negative three. And you may begin to sort of see a pattern here you know, we might even be able to predict what we get the next time we differentiate without actually having to differentiate it because we've seen maybe some sort of pattern. Now, all we need to do now is to substitute in um, x equals a half into that. So that will give us uh, negative 2, 1 minus a half to the power negative 3. So basically, we've got half to the power uh, negative 3 times by negative 2. Just quickly do it on the calculator. And that gives me negative 16 as the final answer, because you'll end up with half in the bracket there. Half to the power negative 3 would be the same as 2 cubed, which is 8 times by negative 2, which gives you negative 16. So now if we have a look at this question here. It says that f of x is e to the x squared. And we need to differentiate it. So an application of the chain rule. When you're differentiating e to the x, if y equals e to a function of x, then dy dx will equal f dash of x times by e to the f of x that's an application of chain rule so that makes differentiating this quite easy so from here f dash of x will equal well if f of x according to what we've got over here is um, so yeah what we've got over here is x squared that will become 2x so let's just write that down 2x times by the e to the f of x which is that so we've just used that chain rule to do that we don't need need the time sign so f dash of x equals now what you may notice is that this bit here well that's just f of x and that's what we started with that's what we've got up here. So we can substitute the e to the x squared with f of x. That's part A done. Now what we can actually do is we can use that result as it's asking us to, to differentiate um, a number of times. And rather than having to differentiate e to the x uh, again and again, we can just differentiate f of x and write it as f dash of x or f double dash of x and so on. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So in the first part of part b, we need to work out what this is. Yeah, what do you get if you differentiate this 2x f of x a second time? So this is going to be the product rule because we've got a product and one half of the product is 2x, the other half is f dash of x or f of x sorry and the product rule says if you've got a product which is u and v then dy dx equals uh, u v dash plus u dash v so remember v dash is just dv dx and u dash is just du dx so um, in this part of the question, basically what we've got is if we call 2x u and v is going to be f dash of x. So we're just going to use the product rule on that. So we'll end up with 2x and then v differentiated will be f dash of x. So you can just write it like that. Um, plus 
the 2x differentiator will give you 2 and then f of x. See how simple that was by using that substitution. And we know what f dash of x is. If, if we wanted to, you could then replace or substitute that f dash of x with what we got in the first bit. Yeah, it just makes things life a little bit easier. And then for the next bit, so we're going to differentiate a third time. So we're going to use what we got from the last one and use that. So uh, we've got two bits of a product. We've got this bit here and then we've got this bit here. So let's color code it for the first bit. U will be 2x. V will be f dash of x which basically means u dash is 2, v dash is f double dash of x, and then for the second part, u is 2, uh, v would be f of x, which means u dash is going to be 0, and v dash is going to be f dash of x. So now we can just substitute those in. So u, or the blue u, v dash, plus um, u dash, the um, blue u dash, um, v, which is f dash of x. Okay, so this is just the stuff in blue, plus, now we do the bit that's in dark red, so u is 2, uh, v dash is f dash of x, and then the last bit, we want u dash v. So that's going to be u dash is 0 times by v is going to be f of x. Now, this can be simplified because you've got 2 f dash of x, 2 f dash of x. They can be put together. We'll simplify that to 2x f double dash of x plus 4 f dash of x. Nice, neat little way of... Um, differentiating multiple times and if we needed to differentiate again you know we've we can use our previous result and you'll, you'll notice that you know if I wanted the um, exact answer for this well I can substitute this in to here when I've substituted that 2x e to the x squared into this statement I can then use this and substitute into that one and then once I've worked out this one, I can then substitute the next one. You see, it's like a um, like dominoes. Once you've got the first one, you can then just apply it again and again to the to the next one. Okay, part C. Deduce the values of f dash of zero, f double dash of zero, and f triple dash of zero. So let's start with f dash of zero. Now f dash of zero. Uh, what was f dash? Well, that was 2x to the f of x. Okay, so that's going to be um, 2 times 0 times f uh, dash of 0. So actually, I should put a 0 here and here. So you can see, so let's put a zero there and a zero here. So just replacing x with zero. And then uh, next bit we need to work out f of zero. That's basically putting zero into this, which is e to the power zero, which is one. So we'll end up with zero. To work out f double dash of x if we go back to the expression for that f double dash of x which was here that's going to be 2 times 0 times by what f dash of x is okay so 2 times 0 now f dash of x we just worked out in a previous part here that's 0 plus 2 times uh, f of x, 
and f of x when we substitute 0 into that we get e to the 0 which is 1 so that just becomes 2 and then the last one you can see how you use the previous one to get the next one get like a recurrence rec relation in a way so the last one says 2 x times f double dash of x which is 2 that was from the last one plus 4 times f dash of x and f dash of x um, or f dash of 0 was 0 so we end up with 0 again and this is going to be very useful this idea of repeated differentiation and working out uh, each derivative at zero is going to be very useful in the next section and, and using these pattern series is very useful so I'll just highlight the final answers we got here so our working well actually we just needed to prove something so the working for part A was there um, the answer for first part of B was there the second part of B was here and then our answers for f dash of zero f double dash of zero and f triple dash of zero look there so you should now be able to do exercise 2b on page 39